we're going head to head with the Connemara Peated Single Malt Irish Whiskey and the Ardbeg 10 year old Isla Single Malt Scotch Whiskey. Welcome to another episode of Eric with Whiskey Studies and in this video gonna do a comparison between these two whiskeys. Now you may wonder okay why Isla, why you know Ardbeg already reviewed recently the uh, Connemara. Um, when I was smelling it tasting I think there's sort of a um, natural comparison to immediately think of Isla when you think of peat. So if peat whiskeys come from anywhere else you automatically think Isla and then start to think okay is there any potential for anywhere in Isla, whether it's um, Kalila, whether it's an Octomore, whether it's Lafroy, Lagavulin, and Ardbeg, you know, what is most like the peated whiskey you're, you're tasting? For example, out of Texas, I have this Andalusia uh, Covenant Oak peated single malt whiskey. This actually, though, has an Irish peat used in it, ironically, because uh, the, the Connemara over here uh, uses an Isla peat. Then we have the Balconas, another Texas whiskey that's also peated and these uh, whiskeys will be reviewed in the near future but again regardless wherever you get a peated whiskey from your brain tends to go hmm is even before you taste it is it gonna be like anything from Isla. So when uh, tasting the Connemara I immediately thought okay is there is it gonna be as good as anything from uh, Isla? I'm a big Ardbeg fan, Laphroaig, Lagavulin fan, uh, is it going to be comparable or is it going to have a completely different profile? Now this is a little bit of a challenge because one, I am a big Ardbeg fan. If you've been watching me for a while, you know that I'm a big Ardbeg cult member. Uh, and secondly, Connemara was a little challenging, particularly when I was first opening it. I've got it now. It's now about half gone. This was a bottle that took a little bit of patience. Uh, on the nose, when I first opened it up, I was getting uh, just a slight note. I said, if you haven't seen my original video, uh, you should check it out if you haven't, haven't seen it. I was getting a slight petrol note. And I said at the time that it reminded me of some German Rieslings. Um, and I said that the cause was something called trimethyl dihydronaphthalene, a very long and fancy word. Well, that note is not only in this non-age statement, it's also in the cask strength edition, but 10 times more, but I'll talk more about that. When I go head to head with uh, the Connemara cask strength up against a Cory Vrecken from Ardbeg, but we'll get into that in another video. So, mainly as I've been really, really actually enjoying this whiskey, particularly as it opened up, the that sort of slight petrol note and it starts to dissipate and it becomes much more complex, much more layered as it gets past the shoulder. Now, I've had some people say that they weren't impressed with the Connemara, that they didn't really like it that much. I first had Connemara several years ago from a sample bottle, you know, those little uh, mini bottles, and I wasn't impressed with that either. So, if I were to base Connemara based on what I had from that mini, then my impression of it, in fact, it has been for quite some time, very different than what I've had from this bottle. So, I suspect. Connemara may have improved in time. There may be some bottle variation. So there's a possibility right, that what you have may have had, if you didn't like Connemara, it is different, particularly if it was some time ago. However, it also may be a matter of just subjective personal preference as well. But let's get into this. Alrighty. So before I get into these whiskeys, here are my notes. The Connemara is made from a Scotch peated barley and Irish unpeated barley. It is a non-age statement, aged in ex-bourbon cast, bottled at 40% alcohol by volume, and in my neighborhood, sells for about $39. The Ardbeg 10-year-old is also aged in ex-bourbon cast. It is aged 10 years a minimum. It's bottled at 46% alcohol by volume, and recently I've seen the prices go up $5 to $10. You used to find them around $46. Now they're going anywhere between $50 and $55 in my neighborhood. So the other big challenge here is uh, we're going to put not just a, a, an Ardbeg, but one which I have declared is the highest quality price ratio Scotch whiskey, period. Period. Uh, regardless of what style of whiskey you like. I think still, even going up another 5 to 10 bucks, 
I think it's still holding its high quality ratio. Now, one of the reasons why I think it's gone up five, 10 bucks, possibly with the release of the five-year-old Wee Beastie, uh, it was a little bit more expensive, I think because of the hype you know, on its first release, it's now come down to actually about the price of uh, the Connemara. I've seen it around $34 uh, in my neighborhood, so anywhere between 34 and uh, 40 bucks for the Wee Beastie. So I think the art bag is mm, it's taking a new uh, place in its uh, price market. But still, I still think it's still a very great value, even at 50 to 55 bucks. And I know in other places, up in Canada and around the United States, they're paying $60 or more. All right, let's get into this. Color-wise, the Connemara is a little darker. It, uh, it's sort of a golden, actually slight tinge of green. The Art Beg uh, 10 is lighter, it's more of a pale straw in color. On the nose, the petrol notes of the Connemara are gone. I'm gonna take a really big whiff, which I normally wouldn't do with a whiskey. I'm gonna take a real bit and see if I can suck that petrol note out, see if I can still find it. That's a real strong draw. Normally I don't inhale that hard on a whiskey, but the petrol notes are gone, and I like that. It's got lemon, lime, pear, apple. The smokiness, I would say, not only has the petrol note gone away, but I would say the intensity of the smokiness has, I would say, reduced a little bit as well since I first opened it, or perhaps it's become more integrated. A little bit of black licorice, which I wasn't picking up before, but I wonder if that petrol note in its uh, reducing has become integrated more into the whiskey and now it's turned to become more of a black licorice note as the whiskey has evolved. It's not as, I would say, briny and oceanic as when I first tried it. But there's still a little bit of saltiness going on there. The lemon and lime character is saying to me, classic Irish note. Something you get from... Uh, a lot of other Irish whiskeys. Some vanilla, a little bit of spice, lighter caramels. It's actually really, really quite nice. Of all the times since I've gotten it down to the halfway through the bottle, it is now smelling, I haven't tasted it yet, smelling the best it has ever smelled. So this is a bottle that needs some aeration. Scientifically, why do bottles evolve like that? I've had somebody say to me, there is no science proof to show that there's a difference between the neck pour and the rest of the, uh, the, the whiskey. I would say any scientist who says that needs to come over to my house and let's, let's open some bottles because we'll do some experiments, right? Some research with some whiskeys and I'll show you how whiskey's gonna change in time. All right, over to the Ardbeg 10. Ooh, yes, 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 yes. Okay. What I get from the Red Bag 10 is much more campfire, much more um, sort of campfire the morning after. You know, you're out camping and you had a, you know, a campfire the night before and you're maybe roasting hot dogs on a stick or marshmallows. You go out the next morning and there's still, uh, you know, the, the, the burnt embers. You get more of that. It gets some nice chocolate notes. So um, there's actually a similar uh, lemon lime character, an apple. Much more chocolate, I would say, on the Caram on the Connemara. I did not mention any uh, chocolate notes. Eh, not really. Uh, I'm not at this point, not really on the Connemara. But I am getting the chocolate notes on the 10-year-old from Ardbeg. The smoke and the peat is much more prominent on the uh, Ardbeg than on the Connemara. And the chocolate notes. And they're sort of like the interior part of a candy bar, the nougat and so forth. It smells sweeter on the nose. All right, let's try on the palate. Back to the Connemara. Nice. One more. I would say the intensity of the flavor has reduced some. Petrol notes are gone, 
but the smokiness and the peatiness of the whiskey has diminished along with that uh, petrol note. Everything's become much more integrated, which is actually kind of nice. Medium intensity of flavors of lemon and lime apple. It has the texture, uh, the silkiness that you expect from an Irish. Very, very, very light caramels, a lighter chocolate. It's and some vanilla and some vanilla in there as well. Very, very, very nice. It's not a big punch in the face. The intensity is quite low, probably because of the ABV. It's at 48% ABV. So advantages and disadvantages between these two bottles. Price-wise, the Connemara, right? Uh, 10 to $15 cheaper. ABV, this is a 46%, I just saw there in the notes, versus a 40% ABV. I would recommend the Cooley Distillery, the Kilbegan, that they bump up the ABV. Let's take this up minimally 43%. I like to see 46, but minimally 43% alcohol by volume. Now let's drink a little bit of water and then we'll taste the Ardbeg. Alrighty. Smoke, campfire, barbecue, much more intense. I mean, like three times. It, it's not just a matter of difference between 40 ABV and 46. It's almost like the difference between a 40 ABV and a 55 ABV in terms of the intensity of flavor. Much more intense flavor and much more smoke, much more peat, much more chocolate. more caramels, more vanilla, more spice. So, in terms of intensity of flavor, the Ardbeg 10 is much more intense in flavor, all right? But they don't taste the same. It's not like, okay, these taste the same, but one is more intense. The profile of the Connemara is much more Irish. Surprise, surprise, much more Irish. Uh, it's more the apple and pear and lemon and lime are much more uh, sort of candy-esque. Uh, and the smoke is much more subdued. The Ardbeck 10 is a richer, that's probably the, the best term, right, concept. It's a richer whiskey, richer vanilla, richer chocolate, much more intense peat and smoke, uh, uh, richer uh, caramels, uh, it's just not just more intense, but there is a sensuous um, richness to the whiskey. Now, normally you just try the Ardbeg 10, you say, you say that's a good sort of beginner level sort of Isla whiskey, but when you put it up against another whiskey that, I don't want to say, uh, this may, uh, it's trying to imitate an Isla, try to be an I Irish version of an Isla, Although using Isla Pete, what can you expect? It's sort of a, this is going to sound even worse, it's a wannabe Isla in a, in a, in a sense. I know that's, that's pretty harsh. I like the Connemara. I like it very much. I gave it 90 points. I gave it 90 points. I like it very much. But the Ardbeg 10, right? This is my fourth bottle of the Ardbeg 10. I probably go through one bottle a year on average among you know all the other whiskeys I have. Uh, I tend to go anywhere like 92, 93 points on average. And uh, my fellow whiskey tubers and other reviewers tend to get in the same neighborhood with the Ardbeg 10. It's just an absolutely superb whiskey. So uh, the winner is the only reason, if you had a choice between these two, the only reason that potentially could lead you to go towards, I think, Connemara was if you just wanted something that's not as intense, right? You want to tame it down. You didn't want to go that intense. Number two, you want to save a few bucks. You wanted to go something a little bit more economic. Third, you wanted a texture that was much more Irish, right? So I, those are the three reasons that I think if you're going to go towards Connemara, you're going to go towards Connemara. But everything else, uh, I think everything else for me personally is going to lead me to the Ardbeg 10. So I'm going to call the Ardbeg 10 to be the, a winner between the two. Uh, but I can also see myself saying, you know what? I want something a little bit different. 
I'm gonna I'm more in the mood of a, a more of an Irish style, right? So that, I'm calling the winner, Red Bag 10, but also acknowledge at times there might be something like the Connemara you might be in the mood for. Alrighty, uh, if you have been watching my videos and you like what I'm putting out there and you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, ring the bell to be notified when I go live. And if you are one of my uh, Patreons, you're one of my supporters, part of my little group, I wanna thank you very much. And uh, I have another video coming up. We're gonna go head to head with the cask strength from Connemara in the Iron Bag Quarry Reckon. And perhaps we'll see, uh, maybe perhaps we'll do some other comparisons. I'll, th I'll think about it. I'll think about it. See where else we want to go with it. All right. Until next time, cheers.